Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Paul Adekwajo, and I'm the Community Manager for the High CFJ Pamela Howard Forum on Global Crisis Reporting. And um, for the past couple of weeks, um, even since we began to focus on more crises other than the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, we've also be, got, been able to appreciate uh, the importance of a multi-platform approach. And as some of our previous sessions that focus on the trends in journalism actually showed that there is uh, there are some genres and platforms that are increasingly getting popular. And one of these is the audio platform and more specifically, uh, podcasting. And uh, with a trend that predicts uh, podcasting to be very popular, it's no surprise that almost every media outlet actually has a podcast now. And um, podcasts are, has also become a very notable category in several media awards. I remember when I attended uh, an award a couple of weeks ago uh, of an historic uh, uh, award ceremony in the UK. Uh, this year, they decided to introduce a, a podcast category, which simply means that podcasts are actually here uh, to stay, and which means everybody that is interested in this uh, sector has to be able to be well informed on how to better structure and deliver this content. And that's why we have that's why we are here today uh, to look to take a closer look at how to succeed and um, and actually how to start with podcasting. And uh, because of the nature of this subject, uh, it was very, very important for us to bring uh, somebody that has actually experienced this and is actually producing uh, a very successful uh, podcast and which was what led us to Suno India. And uh, when I checked the first time, I uh, the first time I heard about Padma and Atim, uh, I was really, really impressed with the vast nature of the topics that they are covering, with how they are able to structure it, the technologies behind it. And um, this really presents them as a really, really good uh, case study for us to put the attention on today. So on behalf of the entire subject, and I want to welcome Padma. Uh, how are you doing today, Padma? Thank you so much, Paul um, and ICFJ for having me. I'm doing great, um, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. So for you, for those that don't know Padma, uh, Padma is the co-founder and editor-in-chief of Suno India. And uh, for those that do not know what Suno India is, Suno India uh, is a multilingual and multi-generational podcast platform that is dedicated to shining a light on underrepresented and underreported stories. And their choice uh, is uh, audio uh, as a medium. Uh, well, I was uh, putting this together. I began to actually see that uh, the audio version allows people that are not that are really passionate about communicating, uh, but are really not sure about putting their faces out there to actually have a voice. But Padma, I don't think that is no longer that is still the case, considering we have podcast shows that have actually been transformed into video and they have video elements. Uh, is that, uh, do you agree with you can still be shy and still do podcasting or that shy aspect has already disappeared? No, I think it's a separate thing. Like I think for us, the reason why we decided to just stick to podcasts and only audio um, as a main medium was also kind of because of the kind of topics that we were choosing. They were pretty sensitive. Um, they are pretty sensitive and not often everybody is open to sort of put their face to it and they're not comfortable you know, having a camera thrust in their face, um, they would be more open to just speaking, you know, have a conversation and having that recorded. I think that was one of the main reasons why we decided let's just keep it as an audio medium. And also, I think there is anyway, um, a lot of visual content and ju just in even in terms of the, the amount of television and YouTube channels that we have here in India, it's a pretty, it's a pretty solid uh, and hyper saturated uh, space, I, I would say so. Um, yeah. For us, it just felt like the audio medium would also help people to sort of um, slow down, take a pause, listen to the conversations and not also be reactive, um, which somehow television debates in India were sort of, they do have the tendency to trigger people to become reactive and, you know, they immediately have to go and type something on Twitter and they urge you to like use this hashtag. And I think we just wanted to move away from that. So in that sense, we we very willingly embrace the slow news um, you know the whole slow news motive yeah. 
Um, okay. And we stick to the good old journalism principles, you know. Yeah. The story as is. Yeah. Yes, the good old journalism principle that seems to be uh, still surviving the test of time. Uh, yeah. Before we go into your presentation, I also want to. Uh, Say hi to all of our uh, participants today on the different platforms. So if you are here with us on the Zoom platform, we are really happy that you can join us today. And uh, we are always interested in knowing where you are joining us from. So if you can use the chat uh, option in front of you to let us know who you are and where you are joining us from, we are going to appreciate that. And if you also have any question regarding uh, your podcast experience, or if you have any question at all uh, for our guest today, it's really important for you to use the q and a option for easier access and uh, compilation to communicate or to pass your question across and for those that are joining us on our various facebook platforms uh, i also want to welcome you for joining us today and if you also have any question uh, for palma i will encourage you to put the question uh, in the comment below the video that you are watching right now and um, so we'll be back to handle those questions. And I think you can start sharing your screen now so that we go into the presentation and I'll be back with the interactive session. All right, thank you so much uh, once again, everyone for joining us. Um, I know it must be uh, like different time zones for some of you. So thank you so much once again. So I'm DVL Padma Priya. I'm the co-founder and editor chief of Suno India. Um, so no India basically means listen India. So no means to listen. Um, and we started this platform, um, myself, Rakesh Kamala, our other co-founder, and Tarun Nirvan. All three of us have very diverse backgrounds. And we decided to start the platform when we felt that there was, um, you know, that the, when we felt that there was not really an audio platform which was looking at telling um, stories using the journalistic principles. And that's how Suno India was born in 2018. And in fact, we will be celebrating our fourth birthday this um, end of this year. I mean, around September of, you know, end of September. So yeah, I'm very happy to be here. And thank you once again, Paul and ICFJ um, for giving me this opportunity. I will sort of give you a bit of, um, you know, a backstory about who we are as Snow India. So currently we are one of the leading digital media podcast only platform. And by that, I mean, we are an audio journalism platform. We use podcasts as a way to tell our stories. Um, and we are one of, the, one of the only ones in India currently. And we have over 25 original shows. So far have produced over 600 episodes and are available in five Indian languages. Um, and uh, in fact, just today and a few hours ago, we launched our Android app. So please do check out the Suno India Android app. It's available on Google Play Store. And uh, we're also available on all major podcast platforms. Um, so this is the Suno India app. Yeah. So, um, why I, so just before I start this, why we, uh, you know, going into the podcasting and how and how to do podcasting and how to succeed at it. I just want to tell a bit of a story about why I started Suno India, which I think I just very briefly touched upon and Paul asked me that question. Um, so all three of us, um, I, I have a journalism experience and I decided to switch careers and I was working for Doctors Without Borders for a couple of years. Um, I was in the public health space and my partner and the other co-founder Rakesh Kamal has been in the climate change space for over 10 years now, over 11 years. And Tarun Nirvan, our other co-founder, was also um, in the development sector working on, we, we were colleagues and um, we all felt very strongly that there were a lot of these stories um, that were that were not getting the spotlight um, because television in India is very inundated with, um, uh, television in India is very inundated with currently with a lot of, um, I would say, at, you know, narratives that are driven by a certain agenda, political or otherwise. And what happens in that is that you sort of lose sight of the actual problems on ground. And as someone, as people who are working on the ground, we knew that there was a lot of um, stories that were not being told. And uh, that sort of led us to thinking about starting our own platform. And we decided that we will do it in podcast format one because um, of the sensitivity of the topics that we knew back then only that we were going to choose some of the topics that were going to be very sensitive. Um, and um, also because it's a low entry medium. 
Um, and by that, I mean that, you know, if you want to start a television channel, it would cost you lots of money. I would, I would assume in any part of the country, uh, any part of the world, I'm sorry, uh, because it would involve you taking licenses and, you know, buying spectrum and, and so on and so forth. Whereas starting a podcast is so much more um, in your control. And it's, I think, it remains one of the most democratic sort of platforms even today. So it's a bit like blogging, right? So you anybody can start a blog and you know anybody can start a podcast. Uh, and so that's essentially how we decided to go ahead and start this platform. So yeah, so today what I will be talking about is how do you develop a podcast format? How do you choose a podcast format? Um, I'll touch upon very briefly about podcast recording equipment uh, and software. How do you record your first episode, editing and uploading that? Um, what are, why do you need podcast artwork? What are the categories um, and how do you list it? And uh, should you have show notes? Should you have transcripts? How do you launch and market your podcast? And um, believe me when I say we are still a startup. We have a, we still have a six member team. We work a lot with contributors. So for us, um, a lot of the marketing has happened through word of mouth. And I feel like if anybody can, if we can do it, honestly, anybody can do it. Um, so if you're someone who's here, um, you know, to start a podcast, already has a podcast or wondering, oh, is this like the right kind of medium for me? Um, then yeah, I hope this uh, session sort of helps you. Um, so this is what I believe. I believe that podcasts are as varied as the people who create them, right? So you as a person might be interested in science or you might be interested in history or you might be someone who is really interested into railways, right? Um, so, and you can actually have a podcast on any topic under the sky. Uh, but before you do that, do ask yourself two questions. Why am I starting this podcast? And what is my podcast going to be about? Um, and I think once you've answered the why and the what, the uh, rest of the concept does fall into place. So for example, take history, right? So if you decide to start a podcast on history um, and say you want to start a podcast on a very specific topic again within the history, because again, history is so vast. Um, so for example, I'll give you an example from Suno India itself. When we decided we'll start a podcast linked to history, we, we uh, reached out to um, you know, I, a journalist come historian who has been tracking the, the city that I live in, Hyderabad, uh, history, um, and he's, he had been, um, you know, writing quite a bit on Instagram. And I reached out to him and I said, hey, would you be interested in starting a podcast along with us? Um, and he was really kicked about the idea. And that's how we sort of reached out. And we, but we kept it very specific to the city, to the city's history, right? And how we do it is we, we tell the city's history and we also do connect it to the sociocultural um, issues at, you know, which are sort of happening even today and how that history, you know, continues to impact the city today or, or our lives today or our culture today. So think about that. Think about how your podcast can stand out and then you'll sort of have your um, concept, you know, starting to fall in place. When we decided to start Suno India, we decided to start with a podcast which was very close to our heart, mine and my um, other co-founder and husband, Rakesh Kamal's heart, which was on adoption in India. Now, adoption in India is still a fairly um, taboo topic, and this was four years ago, and um, we and you know we had just adopted our daughter, and she had you know been with us for around three years, but we were still getting a lot of questions around adoption and, and about you know why did you adopt to um, you know what's the process like and will you be telling her about her adoption? How will you tell her adoption story? So there were a lot of questions that we were being asked, and we decided that um, we would sort of use something um, that was so close to our heart but you would also use it to create a podcast and almost like a resource for, um, for folks out there, um, you know, who, who are planning to adopt or who want to adopt or who are hesitating to adopt and have all these questions. So that's how we went ahead and started Dear Pari, our first podcast, and we launched Suno India with this podcast. So once you ask this question about why you're starting a podcast, there are some common goals in podcasting, right? Like, and this is, I would assume it would be the same for um, whether you're starting a blog or whether you're starting a, a newsletter. One is you want to share, say, an important message or you're trying to bring, build, bring, you know, build your brand as an industry leader or, um, you know, or an expert within your industry. 
um, or you want to generate leads for your own business, right? So I think just think about what are some of the goals with which you're starting this podcast. For us, it was important to start this podcast, um, the Suno India. We wanted to launch this with something where we had done a deep dive into the into the conversation around adoption from a personal, but also from a from a you know a mega sort of a point of view, right? So we sort of zoomed out from our you know we sort of zoom in and zoom out of the from our story, and we talk about what are all the issues um, surrounding adoption in India. Um, how do you navigate it? And uh, and we we sort of did like a 360 degree sort of a dive into the into the topic, and we created a reported narrative podcast. Um, so yeah, in terms of your topic, like I just said, you know, it can be so it can be as broad as pop culture, or it can be focused on discussions about say your apex courts rulings wherever you are. I'm sure there are like supreme courts, right? So you could you know even do something like that. I think the only requirement which I believe um, is really useful um, and helpful to be successful in podcasting is that you have to be really passionate about it and you have to be consistent about it. So it's if it's a it should be an idea that you're excited to research and regularly discuss about, right? But if you're doing it because someone asked you to do it, you may not put in that kind of um, you know you might not be as keen about it. Um, but it should you know and and even if it is something that say your organization wants to start then see how, how can you sort of also bring in your sort of interest into it, right? So that's something that you can think about. Uh, once you have an idea um, of what to podcast about, look, start doing a bit of market research, you know, um, look for your uh, show's topic, Apple Podcasts, and see what are the kind of podcasts that are already there in the genre. Um, you know, look at, okay, what, what kind of uh, stories are there? What kind of podcasts are there? How can my podcast stand out in this you know, milieu of podcasts that are, you know, dropping every single day um, onto, onto the, you know, internet. So once you have your theme and topic sorted, the next step is to sort of choose your podcast format. So um, if you are an avid podcast listener, or so someone who's just starting out listening to podcasts, you, you would have realized by now that podcasts have, see, a single host or others are scripted stories or some, in, you know, feature in-depth interviews. So I think the most important thing is to choose a format that fits what your podcast is about and what you're comfortable with. So if you're someone who loves improv and banter, you know, um, have a co-host, you know, if you like to have a conversation, conversation style of, um, uh, you know, podcast, so try that. Uh, but if you're someone who likes everything planned out and scripted, then you might actually also think about doing like an audio drama or an audio documentary um, or a scripted narrative podcast. So, like I said, you know, these are the kind of podcasts that are currently there. So, um, typically serial podcasts uh, that have a single theme for an entire season are like, you know, for a full season um, in the nonfiction space are called scripted non nonfiction. News recap is something that's really picking up uh, among podcasters, um, especially, you know, journalists turned podcasters, um, you know, where you're sort of summarizing the news within a certain industry. So, for example, in the last few um, months, we have seen, at least in India, um, and also I think from, from the United States, we've seen a lot of podcasts, which is just summarizing uh, news around the cryptocurrency, right? So what is crypto and NFT? So um, sort of simplifying these things for people and simplifying the news around it and just trying to break it down for people as to why they're even in the news and how is it useful for them or not useful for them. Um, so these are just some of the formats that you can use. Another really interesting format, which is very successful is scripted fiction. And, you know, these are similar to radio dramas and very highly produced. And uh, there are some great ones out there. Do, do check them out if you're someone who's really into fiction, um, storytelling, and, you know, you want to experience it in a very auditory format. Um, that's something that you can really do check out. Um, another question that I'm very commonly asked is like, what, how long should the length of a podcast be, right? So this is something that um, I remember reading somewhere um, and, and something that I sort of have come to now realize is that it should be as long as it needs to be without it being any longer, right? So don't keep it longer just because you've done a one hour interview doesn't mean you need to use the entire one hour. Um, for us at Snow India, our podcast is somewhere between 25 to 30 minutes, but we do have episodes which are an hour long and some which may be like just under 12 minutes or 14 minutes. And that really depends a lot from a um, lot on the kind of content that we are sort of getting. And if we are able to tell that, you know, talk about that issue within a certain given point of time. Um, and I'm someone who's uh, who believes that every podcast can be benefit from editing. So 
you know, get comfortable from cutting out rambling segments, boring questions, or parts of episodes that don't add much to the listener. Um, I have a great uh, contributing editor, Menaka Rao, and she's, she's just fantastic at, at editing. And, you know, I'm so lucky to have her in the team. And uh, she does help me out quite a bit in sort of the editing part of things. And, um, you know, and, and I've become more comfortable since she's joined the team and also, um, you know, cutting and, you know, in, in chopping things and making our podcast more crisp and, you know, more to the point in that sense. So, um, not to say that we don't have conversation style podcasts, but we do, we do realize that there is, um, you know, that people, it's about getting people's attention, right? So pe- already people have so much attention, like their, their attention is being pulled from everywhere, from Instagram reels to Twitter uh, feed to, you know, Facebook feed. To, so it's really important for us to keep our en- listeners engaged. And if we have to do that, then we have to ensure that our editing and scripting is, you know, are really good. Um, so like I said in the beginning, one of the reasons why we as Snow India chose audio was also because of the low barrier to entry and we were a bootstrap startup in 2018, putting money from our own pockets and we decided, and when we decided to do this, we were like, okay, sure, let's just do it. Um, and we realized that the overhead costs, um, are not a lot. Like if it's relatively easy to begin the process with a very little overhead or even very little experience. So Again, to give a bit of a, a background, all three of us uh, had at this point in time, uh, out of the three, I had just, I had some experience creating a podcast, but all three of us were more listeners. Um, I had more experience in writing because I'm trained as a print journalist. I'm a trained print journalist and you know I'm just used to writing articles, um, but um, I was really keen with audio from the beginning. So I think that really helped. So in the initial days, we actually had a small Zoom H1, which we used for recording and uh, that that came handy. And also, um, you know, our phones, whether it's Android or iPhone, and, you know, just, you can just start recording a podcast on that and, you know, buy a good pair of headphones or, or, and a good label mic, um, which costs pretty less. Um, I don't know about like your part of, of where, which part of the world you are, but like a, a label mic really doesn't cost a lot. Um and uh, once you have these things, you can actually, you know, go ahead and start your podcast. Um, so, um, but say you want to, um, you know, pick some really good podcasting setup um, and you don't have some any background in audio recording. This is just a very simple sort of, um, you know, setup that we have created and which we use also. So for a one person setup, we have something called as the ATR2100 mic, which is like a USB mic. You can plug it into your laptop um, and you can carry it around it's a it's a nice small handy mic um, which comes with a little tripod where you can put it on and you can go around and sort of um, you know wherever you're if you're traveling and reporting then you can take that around or again like I said a zoom h1n is a, one of the best sort of recorders that you can get when you're starting out um, and get a mic with like a make sure that it has a pop filter um, for zoom h1 and you can buy a pop filter same thing for ATR 2100 um, again for so there are like I've given like uh, up to three person setups here um, and I think the uh, the beauty of podcasting is that I think you can sort of do it pretty much from anywhere once you figure out how do you eliminate the unnecessary sounds especially for the narration part um, but it's 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 uh, and it's, it's not rocket science once you figure that out so yeah so once you've um, sort of recorded your podcast, it's sort of time to make edits and adjustments to get the best sound quality possible. So um, there are options to edit your podcast on your Android or iPhones, but I feel that those screens aren't really great for sound editing. But, you know, again, uh, podcast editing software is uh, is free um, or affordable, pretty surprisingly pretty affordable. Um, for starters, I would uh, recommend all of you to download Audacity, um, which is a free um, open source tool. Um, it can be used on both Mac and Windows, and it's a, it's a great starting uh, sort of a editing tool. If you already have a Mac, it comes with a garage band, uh, which you can use for podcasting. Uh, our earliest podcasts were edited on garage band. Uh, the other um, software that I would recommend, but maybe once you get comfortable with editing, is Hindenburg Journalist Pro. Um, Hindenburg Journalist Pro is actually one of the easiest audio editing softwares that I've used. Um, and I'm not someone who edits a lot of audio. Um, and it's it's very easy to understand and quick to learn. 
they do have a trial version if you're a journalist i think it's something like 90 days and after that it's um i don't remember the cost but it's not too expensive and then you also have if you want to go more pro then you obviously have the good old adobe audition um but i would say for starters go with um audacity um and uh, that that's a great starting point um, I'm just showing you a bit of this. Uh, pretty much even Audacity will look, but this is the Hindenburg Journalist Pro. Um, essentially, you will have to put your audio into different tracks. This is the first track will be say your voice, right? Um, your as you as a host, and then the second track will be of your the interview or the interviewee's voice, and the third track will be ambience, and the fourth track will be your you know intro and outro music. Um, I know this this might feel overwhelming in the beginning, but the more you practice, the the better you get at it. Um, and the the best part about Audacity and or, or all of them actually is that there are a lot of YouTube tutorials that are available, um, which can which actually teach you almost on a step by step how to use the software. So um, it's in that sense uh, a very beginner friendly sort of a tool, and uh, uh, you can you can directly record in Audacity also. So um do download audacity and check out some of the youtube tutorials that are available on you know on youtube and there are tons of them so i can't recommend any one in that sense but like a lot of them are there um and of course uh, one of the things that has happened because of the pandemic is that we have um, had to shift to um you know doing long distance recordings and not always go on to the field and you know uh, meet people and record in person so uh, zoom has uh, become our one of our go-to interview platforms for podcasting um, it does have a pretty, uh, you know, high quality audio um, and, you know, people find it easy to use. Also, it allows you to save each speaker's audio. And uh, very recently, they've also um, added the, um, you know, echo cancellation and also other features to sort of eliminate any other disturbances. The other really good option is Riverside FM or Squadcast or Zencaster. We are Suno India, we use Riverside FM. Um, again, there are uh, free versions for this. But if you are someone who is who has going to be recording quite a lot, like we do, we have multiple shows, so we have a pro version that we have um, subscribed to. So there are uh, plenty of subscription options available for all of them. Do check it out. Um, and this is where things get real, right? Like recording and editing your first episode. So once you record your episode, a lot of potential podcasters in our experience tend to sort of give up because you know things get plain difficult and technical and they're like oh my god like how do we do this how do we edit and then they just get caught up so i would recommend that you sort of um you know do like trial recordings and you know do to trial edits before you go in for your you know actual first episode of your um of your show um and before i forget i'm sorry i should have told this right in the in the beginning um the uh, npr has a great uh, podcasting blueprint format i think um, i recommend i highly recommend everyone to sort of download that uh, whether you're starting off or if you already have a podcast i think uh, that npr blueprint podcast blueprint um is really really helpful to sort of keep uh, to sort of make you ask some critical questions about why are you starting the podcast who your audience will be um you know what kind of um, how many episodes do you want to do and also gives you like a format in terms of like um you know what kind of a format do you want to choose so it sorts of helps you put things down in writing because i think that's really helpful for us when you're starting off something so the npr uh, blueprint just google it uh, the podcasting blueprint and you should find it um, I'll try to find it at the end of the session and put it in the link um, in the chat box. Otherwise, um, don't give up here um, at the editing stage. Um, do remember that even the best podcast had to start with a few bad episodes and a bad edits. Um, and every show and every show host eventually finds their footing and they keep getting better, you know, as they record new episodes. And this has been our experience as Suno India. A lot of our um you know i think majority of our podcasters uh, and people who are working with us are all first time podcasters they were all journalists uh, whether print digital um, you know web or tv but podcasting was a fairly new space for them and everyone also feels that their voice doesn't sound good like when i heard myself the first time in the, the first episode of our podcast i absolutely hated my voice and apparently there's a huge scientific reason behind it um and the, i remember reading an article about this so don't um think that you sound bad you don't um that's just how we are tuned to i think listen listen to our own voice so um don't give up at this at this point keep uh keep keep at it um 
the other thing that really helps uh, when I was talking about the NPR blueprint is also this, like writing a podcast outline, right? You don't have to write out your podcast go bottom, but even like taking time out, um, you know, it's 15 minutes or half an hour to sort of jot down a list of bullet points on what you want to cover in your episode that that will actually just improve your podcast a lot because one of the common mistakes that a uh, that you know a podcasters new podcasters make is that they keep rambling whether it's you know um uh, you know whether it's asking really lengthy questions um so i think the best way to sort of fight this tendency is to write a podcast outline and if you're working with a co-host make sure that you share the outline with them so you are working together and you'll be on the same page and you know it'll sort of prevent your conversation from going down a rabbit hole um we recently started a new format um, and trying out in fact we're trying out a new format for our suno india show which is our current affairs show um in that call we're call, calling it in our opinion and uh, you know in this me and my uh, menaka and i uh, you know as co-hosts we sort of um, we do, we take one topic and we sort of break it down and we sort of discuss about it so we started the first episode talking about the marital rape exception that ha- happened in india where basically um you know a judge ruled that marital rape is not rape and you know we sort of um spoke about it you know we we expressed our opinions but we also went back to sort of um looking at how this even came about and you know the history of it and you know you know what is sort of driving this sort of a patriarchal attitude even today and you know so we did write down points for that um you know we we made sure that we had because of course it was also a bit of legal um uh, legal thing and we didn't want to go wrong um, so we did write down the important points, but but we do we are trying to be um, you know while being conversational, we're also we also have to be factual. Um, so uh, we do share like our you know we put together like a Google Doc, we share it with each other. Okay, what this is what you know we would like to talk about, and we sort of have a conversation. So again, something to just think about. You know, having a podcast outline really helpful. Um, so pick a place to record. Um, recording in small spaces with. Um, you know, uh, you know, with hard flat surfaces will always mean echo. And that's not what you want in your podcast. So try to record in a quiet, large room with, where there is space around, but also which is filled with, or if it's a small space and make sure it's filled with a lot of furniture, carpeting. Um, um, we have recorded episodes. I have recorded episode uh, under a big duvet, you know, under a big blanket, thick blanket. Um, I know colleagues who have recorded it inside a closet. Um and uh, and that's okay but you know as long as you can do whatever you can to eliminate the sound and again uh, when you are recording another guest don't hesitate to send them beforehand um, so have like a checklist which you would like to send them beforehand basically telling them please wear a headphones please make sure you have a you know headphone with a mic um, please make sure you're sitting in a quiet space away from the window where traffic noises may come in please turn off say your fan if the fan is very noisy um, please keep your, uh, you know, web, uh, you know, your browsers closed or your web WhatsApp closed so those pings don't come or, you know, email pings don't get recorded. So, you know, literally um, you you make a checklist so that you and you have to be open to telling these to um, your guests um, and you can sort of email it in advance to them so that they're also prepared. Um, yeah. Um, excessive bursts of air hitting the microphone is not a great mic um, technique. So, when you're setting up your mic, uh, keep it away, you know, slightly towards your mouth, but also make sure that it's like two inches to four inches away from your mouth. Um, and this, you know, but the optimal distance will also vary on the kind of mic you have. So some mics are unidirectional and some are, um, you know, dual direction mics. So when you are choosing the mic, you, that also will have an impact. But of course, you can also change the mic settings, right? So the mic will have settings where you can change it to make it a unidirectional mic or make it a multidirectional mic. So uh, for example, there is a mic called the uh, Blue Yeti mic, which is uh, which can be multi-directional, and you can have so like two or three people sitting around the mic and talking. Then you have to sort of switch it to the multi-directional mode. So um, drink water before you record and uh, avoid drinking cool drinks because you might burp during interviews, and this has happened, which is why I put it in the in the presentation. Um, and I'm not joking about this, and it can be really annoying. So yeah, um, so. Start segmenting your podcast once you decide, you know, once your recording is done, remove the most, you know, audible distractions. So say a dog barking or like a bird, which is really noisy, um, you know, and this is where you sort of start like cleaning up your audio. um, And you also can start inserting, say, if you already have any ads that you want to insert or voiceovers or intros and outros. 
Um, and once you have the right software and, you know, like the few pointers that I'm giving and also otherwise, you can create a well-edited podcast. Um, it's the it's the behind the scenes process that also overwhelms a lot of, you know, that takes a little preparation. The first episode does feel a bit overwhelming, but once you do that, um, you know, uh, you're good to go and just don't let the process overwhelm you. The process is there to help you. So as long as you think of it as that, um, as like, oh, I just need, like, it's a checklist and I need to sort of tick off these checks um, these, these, you know, part of this checklist and these to do things. And I know that I'm going to get a really great end product at the end of it. So have that sort of an attitude going into it. Um, the other thing that I highly recommend is create a good podcast intro that can help improve the listening experience and also help with listener engagement. Um, so look for royalty free music. Um, so, you know, see what you can sort of use. Um, and there are a lot of, again, resources out there where you can find this copyright free um, you know, royalty or royalty free music also that you can use. Um, but do re do remember that other podcasts may, uh, podcasters may be using the same track that you choose, but, you know, don't stress about this because it's not like the listeners can keep track of the same music all the time. Uh, however, if you do want exclusive music, you can purchase a track. You can also work with, say, friends who are musicians and ask them to create good intro music for you. So that's another thing that you can do, right? So, um, and we did this in the beginning when we were launching Suno India. We um, reached out to our network, um, to our community of friends, family. Um, and we said, hey, will you help us with like creating original music? Will you help us with this? And so don't hesitate to ask folks that you know um, who may be musicians or who may be artists who will be willing to do something at a nominal cost um, for you. Um, so that's something, again, that you can do. You can actually get original music designed for your, uh, for your uh, podcast. Uh, uh, do check out Audio Jungle and Envanto. Uh, they have a lot of um, Envanto elements. There are a lot of free songs or free audio tracks that, that are there. Um, prices start as low as $1 and it again has a membership too. So if you're going to go in for multiple podcasts, this will be useful for you, but you can actually buy tracks for just $1. So you can check that out. Make sure that you download your um, final file as an MP3. Um, so do set it at 96 kbps mono for spoken word podcast. And if it has feature music and you know it has an studio, so just download it as 192 kbps. Um, there is something called as ID3 tags in podcast. So in it for audio files. So do make sure that you add the ID3 tags for your podcast. And it's it's like metadata. It basically saves your um, you know, it sort of tells your, uh, the listener and also, you know, people who might be downloading it as to who is the creator of this podcast, when was it created, um, the date of it. So, you know, um, make sure that, you know, you have that ID3 tag. It's really helpful. Um, but say if um, someone just shares the audio raw audio file and this data gets lost, so it's really useful to have that data embedded within your uh, track itself. So once you have your final file, this is where you're going to upload it to your podcast host. Um, there are many podcast hosts. I mean, the free one is Anchor. Um, hosting on Anchor is free. Anchor is owned by Spotify. Um, I would highly recommend that you read all the terms and conditions to make sure um, where the copyright will belong if you host it on Anchor. Um, similarly, check um, the other spaces where you can look at is um, Lipsyn, Omni, Audioboom. Um, there are a couple of others. Bus, uh, Sprout is, I think, another one. Um, so there are quite a few, um, you know, podcasting sort of hosts, uh, distributing uh, platforms, which you can use. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, yeah, you can use one of these platforms for that. So just before, uh, you know, we, I go to the next sort of section, just, you know, keeping, you know, sort of uh, covering up, um, sort of summarizing what we spoke about, uh, just especially regarding the editing part. So make sure that there's separate tracks for each speaker and music. Um, Edit for content, then distractions. Fade between tracks if you want to remove unwanted noises. Um, and remember, practice, practice, and you know your editing will get faster with that. And add music only where needed. Don't keep adding music across the podcast. Another mistake that a lot of podcasters will say, keep like this background music just running all through, and that can be really distracting for your listener. So add music only where needed. So you know in the intro in the middle transitions or where ad is coming up and at the outro, um, or if there are like pauses and you want to sort of make an impact, right? So that's where you add music. Um, so when you upload on any of the podcast hosts, the host will give you an option of uploading your RSS feed on platforms like Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Castbox, et cetera, um, you know, et cetera. So 
um, do make sure that you consider having like a podcast cover art because this is something that will catch the eye of the new listeners, you know, um, or, you know, that catch the eye of the new listeners on Apple Podcasts or wherever they're listening. So, um, you know, they should be able to figure out what your show is by just looking at your um, artwork. So this is just some of the um, resolution and sizes that you sort of need to look at. Um, you can create it yourself um, on Canva. Canva has now become like such a fantastic resource to do this. Um, you know, you can start by finding a high resolution image as your background. Also look at Pexels because they have thousands of beautiful um, royalty free images that you can use. Or you can hire a professional. We work at Suno India with a lot of illustrators because we love combining illustrations with audio. Um, and in fact, for our first podcast, Dear Pari, we had episode art for every single episode. And, you know, of course, as we kept adding more podcasts, that wasn't uh, really sustainable or feasible. So we couldn't do that. But um, all of the podcast cover arts that you now see on the screen have been um, um, designed exclusively for Suno India by illustrators, um, you, know, you, you know, from the community. So we do work with multiple illustrators and uh, we've been actually quite lucky to um, find some great illustrators to work with. So again, you might know some illustrators or graphic designers who are friends or in the network or, uh, you know, find uh, spaces, say, um, you know, like, you know, any of these freelancing websites and you can put up there and ask them if they would be interested in sort of doing a cover art for you. Um, and it does make a difference. So just a sort of glimpse of, you know, our, all our cover arts. Um, so yeah, we are at uh, currently over 25 plus original show, 600 uh, episodes, yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, we have from, you know, everything from um, current affairs to, um, to storytelling for children or contemporary storytelling where we sort of talk about, um, you know, um, if we talk about environment and the world around them for children to talking about digital rights to science to, uh, you know, now we recently just concluded our um, podcast on long COVID. So yeah, so that's essentially the kind of length and breadth of our podcast. Um, another important thing, write a description for your podcast. So a podcast episode is, like I said, is, is description also apart from the ID3 um, tagging that you do, your podcast episode descriptions also consider like metadata, right? So make sure that you write a really good um, description and, you know, um, this helps it also make it very visible on on all the platforms so um and it's really essential for success so it's where you sort of explain what your show is about in one paragraph um make your you know make sure you tell the ones reading it what is it in for them and make it you know entertaining or educational for them so that it encourage people to subscribe um you can always go back and change the wording so uh, don't also again take up too much time on that so this is just a uh you know, just one insight about for, you know, a description that we had written for our podcast. So a second season of our podcast on rare diseases called Rare Lives. Um, and this is, um, you know, our podcast where we talk about um, people living with very rare diseases in India. And so, you know, this is essentially, you know, where you're introducing the show to people, uh, talk about what the podcast will focus on in this season um, and uh, why we think it's important uh, for people to listen to this podcast and uh, who will be featured in this podcast. So essentially, um, yeah, cover the why, what, who, and, um, you know, how sort of a thing. Um, again, very important to pot, uh, optimize how your podcast appears in Apple Podcasts. And, um, and once you do it on Apple, it sort of gets reflected everywhere in other podcast hosts. So uh, make sure that you, that you pick the right podcast category for your show. Um, and, uh, so, you know, say if you have news, then there are subcategories also, right? So make sure that you're sort of uh, doing that. Uh, so this can sort of help boost, boost your show's visibility. Um, Apple also has a form, um, again, I'll try to find the link to it and share it. Um, and maybe Paul can send it out later, um, there you can sort of, if you're launching a podcast and you think it's unique, you can actually write into there, um, the ones who are sort of compiling the new launches, you know, the ones on the for the banners and you can sort of send them your um, podcast and tell them that this is what we're launching and would you be uh, able to feature it? And if they're interested, they might pick it and uh, feature it. So, yeah, um, like I said, just, uh, you know, once you get listed, then, you know, uh, make sure that, um, you know, you're there everywhere um, and make, make this part of your marketing strategy. So from the Spotify's to the Apple's to, you know, if there are local, um, 
music uh, slash podcast aggregators in your country like we have something called as geo seven in ghana so if you have someone like that in your country make sure that you also reach out to them and tell them that hey um, would you be interested in sort of posting a podcast on your platform um yeah that's another thing um once you have few episodes finished right so make sure that you at least have say three to four episodes done edited and ready decide how you want to launch your podcast so you know you can either launch it with in an like i don't know like an offline event which um i know seems wow like very new right now in the post pandemic era um where you sort of invite the press or you talk about it or you can just do like a soft launch where you launch the cover art and you you know launch a trailer and you spread the word to friends and family using social media um and you know maybe if you know other journalists who would be interested in it maybe have them review uh before the launch about the podcast right so that's something that you can do and remember that you know even if um, the average podcast because remember you are fighting amongst um you're trying to stand out amongst um millions of podcasts at this point um so you know even if your podcast gets a little over 100 listeners in the initial months that is good that is really good so don't get discouraged uh, uh, because that means you're on the right track you're already built, making a niche for yourself and uh, you know and you what you should do is you should really leverage existing communities and that's something that we as suno india um, really do is that you know we um, reach out to um, existing communities so for example when we launched this show on um, digital rights and digital um, you know uh, and how um, you know digital rights of citizens is being um, used or encroached upon Uh, we have a show called cyber democracy we have three seasons in it um when we decided to launch that we tied up with a with a host who was a digital rights activist and uh, you know we work with him um to sort of bring stories which can be simplified as to why um you know why data protection laws are really important india doesn't have a data protection law and why that's really required so we sort of go into uh, you know simplifying it and breaking down and we knew that there was an existing community for this kind of a content because um the host had a good following one on twitter but also he had already had established himself as an expert writing about the topic and we knew that there was this was a gap that nobody was really addressing like no one was really simplifying things for people as to you know everybody would say oh like don't like don't give out your biometrics randomly right so but why why not and you know people would talk about facial recognition technology the government as as one of a great like sort of a tool but then what is the the flip side of it so we knew that there were people curious to get answers for it and we knew that the community was there and we sort of leveraged the existing community when we launched cyber democracy then we went on to partner with the internet freedom foundation in india and other you know similar organizations to sort of build on that community and to you know to sort of keep it going so um think about that uh, don't be afraid to do podcast in niches uh, podcasts work really well if it's a niche um uh, so yeah and think about when you're doing this like what is the kind of app, you know added value you're doing to communities um you know so if you just spam links on the web people are going to get turned off think of also having a newsletter for your podcast you know so as in when a new podcast episode is dropped you can sort of send out like an email newsletter to your subscribers saying hey the new episode has dropped this is what we are touching on um what you know this is what we're thinking of for the next episode would you like to sort of contribute your voice or your thoughts to in the next episode you know or something like that so find ways how you can sort of engage with your community and build around it um again um and in fact this has uh, i should actually be adding in this um the the audio spaces you know the clubhouse and the twitter spaces that have actually come up um and how useful they will they are going to be for podcasters also so think of how you can use social media to sort of leverage and uh, get the conversation around your podcast um so you know you can decide that every sunday you will um you know every sunday after your podcast is launched you will do like a twitter space where you will talk to um you know you'll invite people to sort of give their feedback or you can you know bring in another guest or host and you choose a topic and you sort of have a discussion around it and keep it engaging and get more people to know about your podcast so this is something that you can definitely think of doing um another really thing that really uh, good way of doing it is facebook pages and facebook groups um you know contact the relevant social media admins tell them about this podcast tell them that hey this is you know we're launching something so we did this for our podcast on rare lives we reached out to communities um on facebook and we said them that we had told them that we're launching this podcast and uh, 
would you be interested in sort of sharing it with your community and often people say yes you know often people are very willing to sort of share anything which they feel will add value to their community so um also engage in forums like quora uh, look at blogs where you can go ahead and write like a guest blog something that we did and you know send out a press release the good old press release way also works um so yeah if you think your podcast is unique is newsy go ahead and draft a good press release and send it out um yeah i think i'm almost reaching at the end of my presentation so please keep your questions ready if you have any again uh, wrapping up so for, for copyright free music you can also check out the freemusicarchive.org you can create podcast art on canva or again adobe spark is another great tool for editing look at audacity um and hindenburg and for hosting websites you have anchor um you also have soundcloud but then soundcloud has certain limitations in terms of how much you can upload on it so yeah thank you guys and i hope this was useful uh please feel free to ask me any questions i'm around thank you very much and um really really thank you we have lots of questions already uh can you, uh let's stop sharing the screen sure and um Yes, thank you very much. I would like you to catch your breath uh, for a minute. And um, we we'll have some uh, participants that would like to actually talk directly. And I would like to start with Abi Mishola, um, who I think uh, is planning to launch her own uh, podcast. So Abi Mishola, before you, before you ask your question, how did you arrive on the issue you want your podcast to focus on? Where are you currently? And uh, what in, what advice we would like Padma to give you. Okay, good. Well, it's morning where I am. So good morning, everyone. My name is Abi Misola. I am about to launch a podcast literally in like a couple of weeks. I am in the US, but I was born and raised in Nigeria. And my podcast is um, it's called Jakpa Diaries. It's on the experience of African immigrants in the diaspora. And I kind of landed on this because I've been in the US for close to eight years now, and I know the kind of mental um, crisis it put me through, the identity crisis, trying to fit in. What does it actually mean? Um, Because many of us come here just for school, but we don't know what the reality of living, you know, in a foreign country is like. And it is very niche, so I think it will be very successful as a podcast. And I know that there are so many... African immigrants in the US alone, there's over 2 million of us. So I know that this is a, there's an audience for this. Um, and I think even first generation uh, children of African immigrants might stand to benefit from this. Maybe they can understand their parents better. My question today is, I'm trying to figure out how to better reach my audience. And one of the things I've been looking into is YouTube. So right now we are recording solely as an audio podcast because that is where our budget <laughs> lies. And I'm wondering, is it worth, is it worth it to put audio only, um, whether it's just 10 minutes out of a 30, 40 minute episode, is it worth it to put these things on YouTube? Um, since there's so many video podcasts out now on YouTube. Yes, uh, Padma, uh, thank you very much. Uh, you, you can take that, you can yeah. answer the question, yes. Hey, um, congratulations, first of all. Um, that does sound like a very interesting podcast. And uh, yeah, please do send out the link uh, even to me. I would love to listen in. Um, yeah, I think, um, so I don't know about, um, I, I don't know about the US, but very recently YouTube in India launched a podcast section. So mm -hmm. please do check that out. Um, see if it's worth putting your, your podcast there. I, we are, that's something that I'm still figuring, we are still figuring it out as Sono India, frankly. Um, but uh, to your question, yes, uh, it's, it's completely fine if you want to put your podcast as an audio only on YouTube, but um there, but you do know that people are coming there to watch a video. So um, mm -hmm. see if you can put like a some sort of moving images, right? Like, um, you know, so that people are sort of fixed to the screen while listening to it. Um, so do think that, so that will require some amount of editing for you to do. So just think in, in those lines because, um, but I do know that there are some, some podcasts who do put out like their only audio only and, um, but I think it would be more effective. Uh, the ones that really work really well are the video podcasts. You know, I don't know why they're called video podcasts anyway, are the ones mm -hmm. where they do see people 
uh, sort of talking to each other and it's, you know, um, and it's recorded and put there. So, and it doesn't really have, when they do put it out, it doesn't have really high editing in that sense because people are also anyway focused on the conversation and not really on the people. So um, again, it really depends a lot on the kind of, um, you know, wavelength and the time you have for, for doing this. But I, I do think that it will have tickers. Yeah. But the other uh, really good way, uh, you know, of sort of doing this can also be, uh, do check out, this for everyone, do check out something called as headliners. So you can actually use headliners to sort of cut uh, important pieces um, of your podcast and sort of use it to make like short reels and, uh, you know, video reels. And, you know, you can put like moving images and everything. Um, and you can use it for for promotion and, um, and on Instagram and so on. So um, headliners are a, a really great, um, you know, tool to sort of, um, you know, again, promote your podcast. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yes, um, thank you very much. So we have Docas, uh, who also wants to ask a question like Docas, you can go ahead. Okay, hello, everybody. So um, I don't know, am I audible? Yes, yes. you are. Yes, yeah. Okay, so um, like I put in the chat, I'm Dr. Sikupe from Cameroon, and um, um, I was very eager to join this session because I want to come up with a podcast. Um, but my podcast is going to be on long reports and documentaries, you know, because I've lived in you know rural communities, you know, where um, we have indigenous peoples and. Um, um, refugees, you know, crisis zones. And so I, I really want to document the stories that I see every day. Um, uniquely, I really love audio podcasts. Um, since I want to be working on long reports and a documentary podcast, I, my first question is, should I be the only voice? Like, should I be the one to record? Or can we walk two of us? You know, can I look for another person to... You know when the the, the 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 report is written and the person records or should i be the only one to do that i think that's the first question and my second question is um is it advisable to use um, a paid um a podcast host given that we're just starting out and you know we have to use um it's personal funding you know mm -hmm. so i think um yeah it's very interesting and exciting but then how to get people how to market your content i think that's why i have a worry and um uh my last question is uh, um um what microphone or recorder to use you know when you're home or traveling because sometimes we don't always have um you know that time to go to the studio and record thank you so much yeah. hey Thorkas. um that sounds like again another very interesting podcast and um to, to answer your question, should you have a host, a co-host, or if you should be the only host, it honestly depends on you. Um, so we have done reported narrative podcasts where we've only had one host. Um, so I, Menaka Rao, who is a contributing editor, she did um, one a podcast on tuberculosis and you know the second season of it is on long COVID. Um, and she's the only host in that, but she does bring in multiple voices of people telling their, sharing their stories of surviving tuberculosis and, you know, of doctors talking about, you know, the, the, the disease burden and so on. So it really depends a, a lot on the, the topic that you're choosing. Like you said, it's on, um, it's going to be more a documentary sort of a driven podcast. I would think, um, um, I would think just you could work, you know, um, but again, really depends on you uh, as to what, I mean, why you want to bring in a second host also matters, right? If you think um, the second host can bring in also their say networks or also their expertise on the topic, then yes, go ahead, bring a second host and you can sort of then, you know, sort of have some sort of, a, um, you know, then you can script your podcast and you can, um, you know, take parts, you know, so some parts you are reading out as a narrator or you're doing the interviews and the other part he does it, so, or he or she. So depends on uh, on a lot of factors. So for example, if, um, it's uh, where you know where, where you're you're placed in one you know one part of the country and they're in another part of the country and you think that they can also bring in perspectives from there then yes think of a multi-host uh, podcast uh, with regards to I think your second question was about um, money am I right no about the mic um, think uh, I had shared in the presentation so ATR 2100 is a great mic um, if you can if you are someone who has a 
you know, it's a USB mic, so you can plug into your laptop and take it around. The other option, which I said is going to be, um, is, is a really good Zoom recorder. So Zoom has, uh, you know, recorders uh, the, from H1 to H6. Um, H1 is a great starting, starting off um, recorder. Um, or Zoom H2 is great, H3 is good too, and Zoom H5 is great too. So it depends again on like the kind of mics you want to add to it and how many people you are going to be interviewing, but a great, and uh, you know, it's really good for, you know, on the, for people on the move. So um, check out the Zoom recorders and you can look up the, again, YouTube reviews on this and see what fits your um, sort of budgets and, you know, your needs and, and take a call. Um, and the other part is uh, whether you should use a host. Um, yeah, I mean, having a host, um, a podcast host basically sort of takes the, um, you know, takes uh, the effort away from you from putting it, put, putting your RSS feed on every other platform, right? But if you can, um, ideally, if you can upload it, say on Apple, then it does get reflected across the other podcast platforms. Anchor is a free podcasting host, so do check that out. Um, but the reason I did talk about checking out the terms and uh, uh, the terms is because uh, they do have certain clauses with regards to copyright. So just make sure that you know you're aware of uh, those clauses too. Um, uh, and I I understand the the budgetary concerns um, for starter. So yeah, I think uh, SoundCloud is another option. It's uh, it's free up till a certain point that you can host your your podcast on, but having a podcast host basically takes the effort away and make sure that your podcast is available on multiple platforms and very accessible to people. So, yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I don't know whether Helene really is uh, ready uh, to ask a question. Yes, I am. Good, okay. good day. My name is, good day. My name is Helene Reed and I'm from South Africa. Um, so, very excited about, I actually had a conversation yesterday with a friend of mine about podcasting um, because it's growing here in our country. Um, you know, we've always had radio, but now I think podcasting just gives um, someone like me that works in TV that feels a bit limited in my, um, in the top type of issues that I want to cover. Um, so the reason why I want uh, to, what, what, the one question is, the different genres. So I want to focus specifically on um, the disabled community, mm -hmm. um, which is one of my focal points. And then the other would be if I had to do a issue or stories around politics, my, my question is, do I separate my genres under one or do I keep them as a host being the host of this particular podcast? and then have all these subsections following, or should I separate it? That's question number one. And I think question number two was in terms of um, the, the, the content um, that you are producing. Um, if, if, if it's advisable to bring in an expert on them to talk with you on the issues. Right. Mm. So your question may mainly the first one is about about niche. Am I right, Yulin? That's correct. Okay. So um, like I said, I think uh, podcasts work if you create a niche for yourself for the topic. Um, and uh, um, and and the whole, I I feel like the one of the biggest points of podcasting is that you know um, the more the more niches you have the you know, the many communities are being like built around those niches, right? So um, when you're saying that you want to start a podcast on disability, again, I think it's really important to sort of identify your audience, right? So do a bit of um, audience, um, you know, segmentation and study and think about when you, you know, because uh, I don't know the top exactly what in disability you're looking at. So for example, if you're looking at it from a disability rights point of view, so who will your target audience be? Um, you know, or is it, um, you know, if it's going to be about, um, you know, people, you know, from the disabled community sharing their stories, then again, who is your community, who is your audience going to be? So I think creating niches are important, but also create it knowing with the back, you know, be very aware of who your target audience is going to be. So 
do think of that as to who who are you targeting this um, podcast towards and what is your podcast aim therefore um when you're targeting towards this audience like are you going to like you have some sort of a call to action or is it purely from an awareness and you know purpose and you know um or is it like an ad are you, you know do you want to use it like an advocacy tool so um there are uh, there are different ways to sort of look at it even when you're creating niches so for us when we for example um launch some some of our podcasts you know for us it's we do it purely from an awareness point of view but we are very aware that this may not cater to the audience between the ages of 18 to 25 for example um uh, but again we have a we have a podcast on on careers which is directly catering to that audience right so we knew going in that it's a niche and it's a niche again because we're looking at careers which are not really spoken about a lot in india um you know so say someone who is in the packaging industry or someone who is working in the solar industry so we we brought in people who work in those industry to share their stories and uh, and that actually is one of our very successful podcasts um so so think about the audience while you're also creating a niche so i think that's really important i hope i've answered your question i think there was another question about um no worry i oh, think i, I, I do would... not yeah i'm sorry i couldn't keep track yes so we have um, this question uh from hanin hanin would like to know uh what if you work on two or three teams how do you choose a title or name for your podcast channel to be rep- well to be well representing of your content hmm um hanin i mean i would think when you're saying two or three teams that's quite broad in itself are you talking about a broad team and then sub categories sub teams are under it because then that would that would help your listener really well because if they're coming in to listen um uh to say uh a podcast on pop culture and then you suddenly are talking about i don't know something else about sustainability in it um then you you know of course you can talk about sustainability and pop culture so if you can make those linkages that's fine but it's really important not to confuse your listeners and to have like a focus team um or if you're choosing a broad theme so for example we have a podcast the suno india show which is on current affairs it's it's pretty broad and you know we we do like cover uh, you know news we cover news under it so um it's really important that you know if it, for you to sort of decide like a main theme and then maybe like sub themes under it because otherwise it will get really confusing for your listener um and then like i said do your market research and uh, to decide the name of your podcast guys like if you have a name in your head the first thing you got to do is google and see if that name is not is not already taken by others um and um, you know that's that's just the starting point of how to decide a name for your podcast i struggle with naming our podcast um our other co-founder rakesh and tarun and menaka they they usually are the ones who come up with names i'm not really great at this naming part of it but uh yeah definitely do your research before you ha- or you decide to call your the you know your podcast something and then you go ahead you go out and find out oh there's a podcast like they're already in south africa you know so think about uh, those things also okay thank you very much another question for you um so this goes thus i work as an editor and journalist for a community newspaper and the area does not have a radio station and uh, access to alternative voices how can i improve on my format and approach to report the news and get into the people ah okay so you know we work a lot we have worked in the past with community radios where we have given our podcasts to be put aired on their community radio how can you improve, uh, improve your format and approach uh, to reporting the news um, and getting it to people i think for us what really works is when we pass the mic on to members of the community and let them tell their story um so whether it's our uh, you know story on on red you know podcast on red diseases or tb or you know long covid we let the people from the community do the talking i think um and i think that's another great reason why podcasting is growing because people um from a community can themselves create a podcast and talk about their issues they don't need to rely on uh, you know um you know people editors or you know uh, not you know like people who have money or who have the resources to start a media a big uh, media platform right so um i think the 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 act, i think if you can just think of how do you, how can you pass the mic on like maybe you can have like a 
for your print itself or your newspaper itself have like a weekly um column which is uh you know um which is guest written by members of the community and they talk about issues that are impacting them so that's one way of doing it and uh, think if you can add a podcast as a resource like an add-on resource because you can't do a community radio podcasting is so much cheaper and easier than therefore right so you all you need is like a room and two mics and um, you can then invite people from the community to share their stories or their challenges or whatever the topic might be and uh, you can have the podcast as an accompanying thing for your community newspaper. Yeah, thank you very much. Another question. Hello, I'm a radio producer and I want to know the process of improving the podcast replay. Podcast replay. Um, could you expand more on that question, Ghislaine? Because um, I, I didn't get that. What do you mean by podcast replay? Probably people listening to it again. Uh, that's what I think. Retention? or how, how long they will listen to it? There are probably people coming back to listen to the same story. Mm. That honestly doesn't happen a lot. Uh, people coming back, like if your listener has listened to your podcast once, the chance of them coming back to it and listening to it is less. But if it's really done well, they will tell others to go ahead and listen to it. Um, I recommend a lot of times podcast to people. I say, hey, go listen to this episode, it's great. So um, I think it's really, you know, how do you make your, um, script and what you're saying on your podcast compelling so that it gets people to um, get people to subscribe to it that's one way of it but also the other way of getting people to stick on to your podcast is making sure that your intro the introduction two three minutes are really solid and really engaging and keeping them hooked right so if you can keep their attention on for three minutes and honestly they do stay on um, for the rest of the few minutes um, so yeah I think I hope I've answered your question Okay, sorry, my mic is off. So we have another question on um, uh, on uh, how do you make money from podcasting and probably the kinds of ideas uh, for somebody that is just starting. How do you make money from podcasting? Guys, this is, I mean, like a million dollar question for a lot of us in the, um, so, so the only places where podcasting is right now making a lot of money is the is, is US and UK and Australia and you know, it's because uh, podcasting has been here for a while and it's been, uh, it's gotten saturated in a lot of other places like Brazil, India, I just, we just heard someone from South Africa. It's just beginning, right? So uh, not a lot of people are seeing podcasts as a great way to, you know, uh, to advertise. Um, and only now it's picking up in India. So, um, so advertising is one source for you to, um, you know, um, to, to make money. The other way is say if you are um, starting a podcast on a on a sense on a on a you know issue that you think is needs to be covered, then you ask your listeners to support you. Make sure that at at, you know, at the end of beginning and end of every episode, you are telling them to support your work. Um, you know maybe have like a patron page or whatever works in your country. Um, and uh, yeah, and the other way is uh, now there are a lot of grants that are being given out also for podcasters. So keep looking out, um, you know, uh, say on ICFG and other places for these grants. Um, so that's another way of making money, but I haven't cracked the code yet. And I, once I do, I will definitely share it with the larger community, I, I promise. Okay, um, this question is also interesting. I want you to look at it uh, regarding, uh, are there any platforms that set podcast pitches from freelance journalists? Um, hmm, good question. I will get back to you on this, Hennis. I know that we do. We do it from, uh, currently we are accepting pictures from freelance journalists in India. And we do hope to slowly expand it to South Asia and then, you know, hopefully go global. But um, I will have to get back to you on other other platforms which um, accept podcast pictures. Um, yeah, I'm sorry about that, yeah. So taking it further, do you see any opportunity in freelancing for freelancers and podcasting? Oh my God, yes. I work with a lot of freelancers. Um, and in fact, I think uh, this is like a great thing to do if you're a freelancer, like make, you know, one way to sort of build your, you know, your your portfolio and sort of to build your, um, almost like your identity and brand, right? Like have your own podcast on the side. Even if it's not making money in the beginning, guys, don't, you know, if you can just put your, put some time and invest some energy in making a good podcast, um, if you can do one season well and then convince somebody to support you and sponsor the second part, the second season or, sec, you know, 
in the second year or something i mean that that's another great way to sort of uh, just as a freelancer to uh, to earn extra income but also to sort of put your work out there you know and um, you know there are people um, uh, publications who are always looking for um, people with some podcasting experience so then you can always go and tell them in you know show them your portfolio and tell them that you have podcasting experience so um, i definitely think for freelancers this is uh, this is a great um, opportunity okay yes another question for you <laughs> okay and i think uh, this talks about this goes to localization mm -hmm. of podcasting so thanks a lot for a great zoom call on podcast we have many languages in india what are the opportunities for podcasting regional languages mm -hmm. um mirza ji um actually the opportunities are are immense and in fact i always tell this to people um you know to uh, to a fellow Indian journalist that, you know, go ahead and start a podcast in regional languages because, you know, oftentimes the kind of podcasts that are currently available in regional languages are around, um, you know, say pop culture or movies or something around, uh, you know, cricket or, you know, it's it's most or, or you know, or storytelling, but not a lot in terms of, say, um, on, on topic based sort of uh, podcast, right? So if you are someone who is keen on starting a podcast in regional languages, fantastic uh, opportunity, you will have takers um, because, you know, people are literally looking for content in audio. And uh, this is something I'm telling, speaking from our own experience of having done podcasts in Hindi, in Telugu, in Tamil, in, you know, and uh, in Hindustani. So, um, there are takers uh, and don't think that English is the only sort of way or English or Hindi, for example. Yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. So there's still, I, there's still a lot of questions that I have for you and our time is fast spent. So let's take, let's start. Um, journalists that conduct interviews and they want to transform their audio interviews into podcasts. What, uh, what, what uh, advice can you give on this? Okay, so for transcription, check out otter.ai. Um, so that's OTTR.ai. So um, this does a pretty decent job of um, of uh, subs of uh, transcribing your uh, podcast. Um, definitely uh, check that out. The other option is if you um, have any Android or even now Apple, any phone, frankly, they um, they do a pretty decent job of transcribing your audio. Otter also has like a um, um, like a smartphone app, so if you can put it on your um, while while interviewing itself, it does live transcribing. So that's another way of doing it. So, uh, but definitely have transcripts because it will help you during editing. Uh, also, if you are someone like me who needs to also read while editing and not just listen while editing, then it's really 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 useful. Um, to have a transcription and also from an accessibility point of view um, having a transcription will help you um, put you know will help people who are hard of hearing to follow your podcast by reading the transcript you can also use a transcript for uh, social media content you know then you can identify like the good sort of sound bites or picking it out and then putting it in your headliner videos um, and of course definitely um, uh, if you think of if you're planning to do like show notes and stuff uh, transcript having a transcription will really help. Okay, so we are back to another round of questions. I'll make this as brief as you can. Uh, this has to do with the frequency in the number of episodes. So how many episodes do we upload per month or per week? Should the number be consistent? Ideally, yes, a number should be consistent. So say you you decide to do your show to be like a bi-monthly sort of a podcast so say every 14 days you want to or 15 days you want to um, upload a podcast and make sure that you are staying consistent if you are thinking of doing it weekly then make sure that it's weekly um, so there is uh, how many how many ideally um, so the ideal there's no ideal number there are podcasts which are also dailies right so you know you have the daily you have uh, new shows which put out like these bulletins, news bulletins, right? So, but um, uh, definitely think of being very consistent with your frequency because your listeners subscribe to it and they're waiting almost, um, you know, if it's a, it's a great podcast, they are waiting for the next episode, right? So they're, they get tuned to by the, by the fourth episode, they're tuned to like receiving your episode every Thursday or every 15th of the month. So 
try to be um, be consistent with that with your with your releases of your episode um, and believe me it's uh, it, it does take time but you will get there my mic is off again definitely they will get there so let's see how many more questions i can still squeeze in for you and uh, so we have um, we have this uh, other question on how to write a script uh, does it have any basic rule what quick tips can you give so quick tips for this um so think in audio there is nothing visual right so see how can you make it more descriptive how can you make it more visual so describe the person you're speaking to describe what they're emoting if you're doing like a video call or in person interview um describe the house that they're living in or the where you're interviewing them um you know describe say the place that you're traveling to while recording the podcast so say you are going to a remote place you know remote village in the mountains talk about that talk about how you you know um, and collect those ambient sounds right you got into a bus you collect the ambient sound of the hustle bustle of the bus and then you go to the mountain and then you're you know and uh, the ambient sounds around there like one of our really uh, well done episodes was from the coasts of uh, of india from the south southern part of india done by our, uh, an environmental journalist called sharada and uh, she talked she spoke about how climate change was affecting the fishermen there and how they were adapting to it and i the, and it's it's fantastic just the ambient sounds because one you're hearing of course the sound of the beach and everything but then she goes to this fisherman's house who is um, you know adapting uh, to climate change and the fact that there has been overfishing and sometimes he's not able to get enough fish so he's adapting by having like chickens and like having a small farm and in the podcast you can actually hear the clucking of the chickens and the you know and a cow moving and all that actually adds you know it adds so it's like you're literally um, it, it's like in writing you describe it right but in audio you can actually add all these audio elements and make it so much more descriptive and uh, say you act and in fact on and went to and other places you can actually found find these ambient sounds also that you can add right like the sound of the wind or you know say you are doing a podcast about people who have survived a hurricane right so then you sort of take make news montages and you put it in so there's so much that you can do and it really depends a lot on your creativity and your patience and what you want to do um, and how you want to do it so you are mute again yeah the very last question uh hopefully what is an acceptable length for a podcast yeah yulin i did touch about this in the presentation there is there is nothing like an acceptable length right like it really depends on the kind of content and if you think that the, the the conversation or the content you're bringing in is really interesting and if you find it interesting and if you don't find it boring or if your your friend your best friend doesn't say oh my god what are they talking about then that's an acceptable length for a podcast but say after 15 minutes people are getting zoned out then you know that you need to do work on editing that podcast and making it tighter so um so i think like an acceptable length really depends like let the content sort of decide that for you um but say 30 to 30 minutes to 1 hour is a good length yes okay thank you very much unfortunately that is how much we can take i will let before i come back to padma for our, uh for our last remarks i would like to make some announcements so um you can catch your breath for a minute and um yes and let me do a couple of announcements so one of the uh for those of your people like Abhi Mishra that I trust that are, and I saw a number of very interesting and uh commendable uh podcast ideas I like to let you know that this month uh, last month we had a story uh contest but this month uh, the attention is on creative uh new media and uh, which is why uh what we are doing this month is really to really get towards a podcast and the media entrepreneurships so um we you can submit your media idea your podcast idea uh for this uh, month uh story contest and um what we often give is a certificate and a token of $200 uh, which is uh just a means of uh acknowledging how nice your idea is and um so you can leverage on this this month i encourage you to submit your idea and uh, we also uh, by the time we are writing a uh, story regarding you and your submission that uh, we expect this would also give you uh, some traction so this is why we are having the podcast so if you have a podcast already i encourage you uh, 
uh, to submit it. And I also encourage you to join us next week when we'll be starting a two-part uh, training on uh, media entrepreneurship. So we already have hundreds of um, registered participants already. So in which we'll be talking about different ideas and every idea, as long as it has to do with new media and content creation is welcome. So that is what our attention will be this month. So please, uh, please ensure that you find in your submissions and we are going to amplify it. Another thing that, uh, don't worry, uh, you will get, don't worry, we are going to ensure that you get the link. Another thing that I also want you to do is to ensure that you, we are having, um, we are having uh, a survey that is currently ongoing and uh, we encourage you to let us know what you still want us to do, how you still think we can help you, what is your personal assessment of this from so far. The goal is to better serve you and I would actually like you to let us know what is happening and how we can serve you better. So just check the link that I just put um, in, the in the description and uh, in the link, sorry, in the chat box and uh, is going to, and we are going to really get to hit. And um, one, um, a couple of, uh, two more announcements that I have. We have a lot of resources for, IGNet uh, has a lot of resources for you that you can access to help you out. I know they've had something on, um, they've had something on podcasts before. So please and please check out IGNet's website uh, for resources on podcasts and several other issues uh, that you may need as a journalist. And you can also gain more insights about, sorry, uh, IGNet.org, sorry, I got that wrong. Huh? So, and you can also get insights about this forum and other initiatives from the International Center for Journalists by visiting ICFJ's uh, website on www.icfj.org. I'm seeing your comments and regarding access to the video and materials for this training. I hopefully hope Padma is going to share the slides. Yes, I can see her nodding. So definitely we are getting that slide and uh, we are going to pass it on to you. So please and please, if you're not a member of our Facebook forum, I encourage you to join that forum on Facebook, that page on Facebook, and immediately we have that, these slides. We are going to drop it and um, we are going to share it with you. And I think those are the announcements that I have uh, for now. And one quick one announcement uh, that I also have, this one is targeted for our participants that are in the UK. We are going to have an in-person gathering uh, in the first week of uh, October. In the uh, October 6, and uh, we are going to be uh, interacting, we are going to be connecting, and uh, it promises to be an exciting uh, time. So I want you to really, really uh, join us. I want you to be part of what is going to happen. I want you to be part of our conversation and so that we can actually uh, have this uh, beautiful time uh, talking about our individual experiences. So we are going to be meeting um at the british museum uh we are going to be exploring the installations we are going to be connecting and we are going to be having a great time uh, together it's happening october 6 which means we are going to be i'm going to be reaching you live from the british museum on thursday october 6. if you're in the uk and you would like to participate i encourage you we have a lot of goodies and um, it's an exciting opportunity. So the link for registration, I'm going to put it now and I encourage you to be uh, part of it. So just be part of our Facebook forum where we have a lot of exciting stuff happening and that uh, we are going to get it down. And um, for now, that is some announcements that I have for you. And as I wrap up, I will go back to Padma now uh, for our closing remarks. And uh, in a nutshell, what do you think uh, the take home uh, for this session uh, should be for our participants? Start a podcast. <laughs> it's not hard. It's not rocket science. There's a lot of resources out there. A um, lot of free resources also out there. Um, and if any of you um, want to sort of brainstorm your idea with me, please feel free to drop my drop an email to me. I've just shared my email ID on the chat. I might be a little slow on replying to emails uh, because I'm traveling till the 21st, but I will definitely get back to all of you. And uh, yeah, if I can be of any help in any other way, please uh, let me know. Yes, so thank you very much, everyone. And um, if you are like I said, if you want to be part, if you want to submit your entry, 
the best place I will ask you to be part of uh, is our Facebook forum. Uh, so that that is where we are going to share the link. Uh, so the link I'm putting in the chat now takes you directly to our Facebook forum uh, group where we share information, resources, tools, and several others. So thank you very much for everybody that stayed with us right to the very end. I think uh, it was a really, really beautiful uh, moment. And thanks to Padma uh, for the guidance that you've provided. If you have used, or if you, have, if you intend to use any of the resources and insights that Padma has shared today, uh, please let us know and uh, we are going to uh, support you in any way. I think uh, Padma would like to know uh, yeah. how she has been able to help you. So please and please don't be shy. Uh, that testimony can also uh, be a way of getting more attention to your project. So thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the day. And I think, yeah, this that you know you are spending the easiest way for you to get the, these materials is in Facebook forum, the Facebook forum. So please and please click that Facebook forum more than you are dropping the email address, and I will take it from there. Enjoy the rest of the day. Uh, have Thank a you. great. Have a great day, everyone. Bye. Bye from me.